There is no video editing or CGI in this video, and I'm going to show you something which all of you are going to think you know what's about to happen, but I guarantee you won't. You've all seen the, 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 the sort of bar bet or the stunt where you can place uh, like a key or a coin on your elbow, let me see which one is good, and can catch it, right? Watch a lot closer. Place it there, you all got a good luck, and watch what happens. Three, two, just like that, comes a dice. So I'm just going to show you one more time using my DSLR camera how this looks for everyone at home, but you take a key or any small object, place it on your elbow, <laughs> it's very slippery, like this, and hopefully I can do the catch test, hooray! <laughs> now everyone's seen that, so we'll do it one more time, this time pay even closer attention, look, if I place the key here, you get a good view, I can just catch it turn it immediately into a dice, which just looks completely insane. Now that's one thing you can do, let me show you some others. All right, this might be the coolest application for this. I can borrow a coin, so this is a real coin, there's no gimmicks on this coin, I can immediately take it from the audience, and I can place it on my elbow, just like this, okay? I'll say the first thing I bet you can do, so I bet that you can, with just a bit of skill, hopefully if I stand back, catch the coin. I don't hope you could all see that on camera. So I think everyone could do that. This next bit is a little bit more tricky. I'm gonna take a Sharpie so you can all see. And I'm gonna place that Sharpie straight through the center of the coin. So another thing you can do is to take a coin like you would with a regular proposition bet for this and place it onto your elbow, just like that. So you'll see, hopefully I don't drop it. And one, two, three, like this, I can actually take it and make it vanish. All right, so there's no live magic today. I know every Thursday I perform a live piece of magic and then evaluate it with my wife, Kaylee and we try and find out if we've basically fooled her, if she's entertained, if she finds it creative or not. But Kaylee is not available today. So instead, I'm giving you a super special, very, very exciting tutorial. This is a principle that I've sort of just discovered. And I say discovered loosely because we stand on the shoulders of giants. They're, what I can see, there's something like it out there, but not all the applications that I've created. So I've give, I'm gonna give you the credits in just a moment. But this one is, there's so much more you can do with it than what you've just seen in the video. It's not just about doing a, a mid-air change. You can do vanishes, switches, and there's even a way, if you do it all correctly, you can have end absolutely 100% clean. You can even be examined by a scientist. Like, it's that cool. So, before we dive into it, all I'm asking you to do is one thing, because you're gonna learn all this completely for free, as we do every single week. Just hit that subscribe button. That's all you need to do. Hit the subscribe button and settle in. Grab yourself some coins, cards, keys, dice, whatever you want to play with, and get ready to learn this super exciting principle. All right, just before we dive in, uh, I've tried to do some research to see if anybody else out there has come up with this before. I showed it to Craig Petty, and he thinks that there's uh, the the, uh, the element to the vanish is 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 potentially in something called Cutting Edge Cards and Coins with Jason Dean and John Bourne. Um, and, and then there's, uh, again, for the vanish, so we're just talking about the vanish element, uh, from John Cornelius and Danny Korem, something called The Impossible Catch, uh, published in Apocalypse Volume 4, number 5, page 490, in May 1981. Uh, and what I can find, because I don't have, I can't get hold of the book, is that the coins vanish during an arm elbow catch stunt. So, that's the sort of credits out there. Craig assures me that, uh, from from his memory, that the, that it's uh, the catch element is only somewhat similar. What I'm doing is something completely different, which is um, to do all these like startling changes and switches. So uh, that that's sort of where the history lies. And, and for you guys that are potentially new to magic, it's really important that you do your history, your research, and your crediting. But I've shown this to a few of the magicians. And uh, all of them, uh, the only thing they can say that there might be something similar out there is just the, the, the vanished part of this. Um, but to introduce all these switches and catches is the part that, I, at the minute, 
I cannot find anything out there. But as always, there's nothing new under the sun in magic. Everything has been created before, uh, whether it's 10 years, two years, or 100 years old. So I, 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 I am sure some of you will pop up in the comments and say that it's there. I've done my research, I can't find anything just like what I'm doing, so um, I apologize in advance if there is. But I know you all wanna learn how to do this, and the secret is uh, pretty devious. It's, I think it's, uh, apart from needing one thing, it's super practical, uh, but you can keep this on you anywhere at all times as a great everyday carry. So, I'm gonna dive into the secret, and it pains me to give the secret, because once I show you it, it's pretty much explained, but there are some nuances to this. So, what you're gonna need is to basically start off, the first part of this is a coin, so as we can see, a coin here, and on the back of the coin, I have placed some double stick tape, just a line of double stick tape right there. So all I need to do in performance is take this coin, um, place it on my elbow, make sure it's stuck down tight, and you don't wanna drop your hand and expose that it's, that it's gonna slide off, so you wanna keep your elbow flat, and that's essentially the first part, but there is a lot more, or at least 50% more going on. Now, just to get the catch down, the first thing I do is that if I've got the double stick tape on the back of the coin, I want to show that it's not a sticky coin. So the first thing I do is to do the catch, but I just don't put pressure, I place the coin down, I don't show the sticky side, I just place it down gently, and then I execute a real coin catch, like that. Oh, yes, did it. Now that tells them more than one thing, it tells them that it conditions them to see this motion, so they get used to seeing this. That means that later on when they see it again, they will comfortably understand what's happening without being suspicious. So they're down the garden path, they're down the rabbit hole. And then the second thing is that this tells them that the coin's not sticky, even though it absolutely is. So now the second time, they, 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 uh, they just expect what's coming, right? So now I can place it on my elbow and stick it down tough, like that. You will see it. And if it, when it comes to just the vanished portion, I'm gonna just execute the same thing, remembering to keep my elbow with the coins pointed to the ground, and now I can make it vanish. The only thing I need to do is make sure I don't expose this. So I did it over here on camera because of the angles, but in the real world, I'd be forward towards you. And this is a great display. Now, when you're actually performing this, you wanna leave this as long as possible. If you're just gonna do the vanish, like that, Leave this moment as long as possible. And if you can, pretend to false transfer the coin as well, because now they're really sold. You can drop this arm and you can be as clean as a whistle. It's a great little vanish. Now you can throw this vanish into other routines, such as if you're doing, for example, a three coin vanish and, you, and you've got a coin, uh, like a triad coin by Joshua J from Vanish and Ink, which allows you to vanish three coins that, and, and the work basically ends up in one coin, so there's no ditches. You could, you could use this pattern of now, you may think I'm using skill, and some magicians do use skill to, to vanish coins. Uh, one piece of skill is to do a coin catch, right? That, that's skill, but I wanna show you magic, and then you can go into doing this, and be like, watch, this is the difference between skill and magic. That looks like skill, but this is magic. And now you've ended that routine super clean, and no one expects the coin to be there, but there's rules in magic. For example, you should always have the hands mirror each other. So if you palm in something, you shouldn't have one hand like this, one hand like that. When you have a dirty hand, the best way to make people believe that it's empty is to hold something with it. So if you if you palm in something. Another rule is, if you're going to make something vanish, you should either make it reappear or change it into something else. Because if it just, and Rory Adams talks about this on his oneahead.club blog, um, if you vanish something, the audience are looking for it, right? So they could be looking for your elbow, looking to your elbow as the, as the method. But if you have something in place of it, then then they then they're only looking at, at the at the evidence that's left, and, and it, it takes their attention and directs it somewhere else. So it's like misdirection for them. So with that in mind, here's how I do the switch. So in the video, I want it to be ultra clean, and this can be done in the real world on the fly. I'll show you with the key and the dice, and then I'll show you ways that you don't have to take the extra step, but I do think, especially for social media, or if you're on a stage or in the real world when you're being completely burnt, 
this is what you need to do. However, there's ways around it. So I'm gonna grab a key in the dice from here. Hello, I'm back. And I'll show you what I did. Now this is, this feels kind of stupid, um, but in the real world you can actually get away, this is not a ridiculous thing. I stuck the dice to the back of my neck. So I don't know if you can see me, I can't tell if you can see me, but I literally took some double stick tape and I stuck the dice to the back of my neck. So I've got double stick tape on it right there. You'll see, and I literally stuck it to my neck like that, okay? So this might fall off in a minute, so I'll put some extra tape on it just for now, just to be doubly certain. So I'll take some extra tape, just make sure that's fresh, like that, boom. So this gets stuck to the back of my neck, and the key, I just proceed with as normal. Now I've got some double stick tape on the key. Um, you can also just put some double stick tape on your elbow before you begin, so that you can borrow the object, all right? So, the reason I stick it to my neck and not just palm it in is because I want to have this appearance of being completely open and clean and never go into my pockets, especially if I'm being burnt on camera or in person. So, what you can do is you can take out your dice or whatever, whatever object you want to load from out of your pocket, put it into a finger palm, a very loose one, and just act like you're scratching your neck casually. It's a very, very normal thing to do, or even just stretch and whatever, whatever suits like your body and your movements and I just stick it to my neck. Now I stick it to the side of my neck, not like directly on my spine just because I feel and it's like slightly above my shoulder blade line so that it like it sits on the angle here not like wanting to fall down and I really make sure it's pushed in hard so I don't know if you can see but it looks like a giant spot. <laughs> now I do the key, the, 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 the catch right and I make sure I do it so it's not stuck down, so they go and they see me catch it like normal. Then I take it and stick it to my elbow the second time. And as I'm doing that, and look how clean this whole display is. I'm here, my hands are open, empty the entire way through. I've conditioned them, all this is normal. I've reached my hand back, which is completely normal to what they're expecting. And hopefully you can see, as I reach my hand back, I just take the dice. And it's very sticky right now, but I just unstick it off my head, right? and I stick the coin here. Now I've just got this dice in my fingers. I push down to make sure that it can stick to my arm. I've got the dice in finger palm, and I just do this. And immediately I changed it to a dice. Because they're all looking at the dice, nobody's looking at the coin on your arm, which is insane. Now I do have double stick tape left on this dice, so you you don't really want to examine without taking it off. You can just put double stick tape on the back of your neck um, and have this the, and make sure that's stickier. It's more adhesive to your neck than to the dice so that you can just take the dice off and make sure it, it leaves the, the cellar tape there or the double stick tape there. But that's really the secret and it's so devious. I come up, I got very empty hands, boom, catch. And there we go, it's changed into a dice and it's such a beautiful moment. And there's so much fun stuff that you can do with this. For example, you could have a coin become a wrapped coin. So it could be wrapped in tin foil. The thing that I was going to do was put a karate coin on my finger. So I put a, a, a quarter here and, poof, and I karate coin it and I'm completely clean. So I go like that and it's, it's cleanly on my finger, but I didn't have a karate coin or the means to make one on the fly. Um, you, could, you could do a bunch of different stuff. You could, you could casually switch a coin to one of those chocolate coin gimmicks where you can do the bite out. Um, but one of the things I did in the video was to take, bear with me, I'm back, is to take uh, a gimmick coin, and I, I'm not going to expose this as it's not mine to expose, but it's a Sharpie through coin that I recently picked up at Blackpool. And I just finger palmed it here. And now I can borrow a coin from the audience. And what I did was I placed some double stick tape on my elbow beforehand so that I could take their coin and stick it to my elbow and talk about there's two different types of skill or any sort of patter. Boom, do the false catch and show them that you caught the coin. At this point now, I've cleanly switched that coin. Like I'm very, apart from raising my hand up and down, I am out in the open here and, and for all intents and purposes, I've switched, they, they don't know anything's happened. Now I can just take a Sharpie and go ahead and do the effect put it in, put it out. And at this point, I'm gonna to need to switch it back. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can switch or clean up from here. So, I've done the effect, the Sharpie goes to the coin. 
Now I can hand this, or at least pretend that I'm gonna hand this to them, or a different object. But as I do that, look, my hands are up, elbow height, right? As I reach one hand forward, this hand is even, it's just casually floating there. It's not far away to steal the coin off, like that. So I can steal the coin off and then switch it out, all right? Now, it seems kind of silly to do it to the camera with nobody here, but the actual pacing of it in real life feels casual because my arms are up here. I've done the routine, boom, switch, sharpie through. Now I can say, go ahead and look at the coin, or keeping this coin in my hand, I can say, go ahead, examine the sharpie. I can steal it off my elbow here. And then as I come up, as they've, as they've got the sharpie, I can switch the coin to a shuttle pass or anything you like for the real coin. But it's just about getting used to doing that. As you lean, as you, all the attention's here, you're bringing the sharpie to them, you can just steal it off your elbow and do a switch. Now, if you are gonna vanish the coin, like I said, it's better to have it appear somewhere. But what you can do is take a two pound coin or any coin and load it somewhere. So I do this, boom, I vanish it, just so that I got, it goes. Now, all I say to them is, look, it does, the coin doesn't just vanish, it actually reappears, it teleports right over there. And as I do, point to wherever I'm gonna go, wherever I've loaded the coin, I can come back and just casually steal it off my elbow here, remembering to not to flash it. What you get to get used to, basically, is being able to move with your own body in, in comfortable ways. Now, I comfortably can stand like this. I would stand like this anyway. Uh, when a, a bar or a coffee shop or in a queue, I would stand like this. So, as long as I've got the audience to look or be distracted, then when I do this casual motion, I can steal it away without them really caring about it. Again, if they're going to examine, uh, if, if, I, if I change the key into a dice, boom, as this hand's free, I hand the dice out and I can, I can steal it off my elbow at exactly the same time. So if, they, if they're focused on something like the dice, like this, so look, the coin's here, and let's change the coin of the dice. I change it to a dice. Go ahead and take a look at that dice. And as, they, oh, as all the attention is up here on the dice, I can steal this off. But if you imagine a real world setting, I'm, <laughs> the, the stick is losing a bit now. But I come here, the coin's on my elbow, whoosh, and look at that, it becomes a dice. Go ahead, take a look. And as I'm coming forward for them to look at it, Look how normal this looks. I'm in this position, my hand from the side is st stealing the coin, but they are focused on the dice because it's, it's the center of attention. And, and, and using that way, then you are completely clean. So one last little thing you can do, uh, and, I, and I absolutely love doing this, is for the last time, you can take it on your elbow, like that, get it, and make it vanish, as you're accustomed to. But this time it completely vanishes and it's not on the elbow. And that's just playing on them even more with their conditioning. So all I did was by having the coin out and about after I've done the change or whatever, as, as, as everyone's reacted, I ditched the coin into my pocket. So I've literally just chucked it in my pocket and continue to act like I'm holding the coin. Now, because they've seen this twice already, they've already seen it a few times, when I come here, I pretend to place nothing on my elbow, I'm literally placing nothing, but I shield it with my fingers as if it's there. I show my hand empty and block my elbow as I come and do the catch, right? And this time, they are looking close, and if they ever thought it was on your elbow, you can use this to untie the method, right? So in their mind, they'll never have an explanation, so... Watch, boom, got it. Look, it's not stuck to my elbow or anything. And now I'm completely clean and all it is is just using conditioning to make them believe that something's there when it's not even there to begin with. So it's just a really sneaky, devious method that once you can do the full routine in a flow, then you can really uh, lead them down the garden path and just roundhouse kick them for the end. So what I would suggest there is doing the first one where you actually catch the coin or key. The second time you switch it, so it's the magic piece, and you show that, and you hand it out and you steal this coin off, then ditch, ditch whatever you've switched in your pocket. The last time, as you're casually chatting, they think it's over, they've reacted to the effect. Whatever it is, place it back in your pocket, uh, ditch it in your pocket, and the last time you're here, you pretend to probably say, one more time, I wanna show you this, what, if I place the dice or whatever it is on my arm, 
you can see, boom, I'm gonna catch it. It's not stuck to my elbows or in my hands. And just like that, the final time it'll go. So you have this nice three phase effect uh, where the methods are layered. They're on top of each other and using the layman's uh, understanding or conditioning that you've done to them against them throughout it. You can tie them in mental knots to create this very, very fun, engaging routine. <laughs> All right, thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed this. I am still discovering new things that I can do with this principle. I, I think it's so exciting. And, and what I love most about this is that people know what this is. This is a universal game. And like I've said a lot of times before, that I think the best magic for spectators, especially with common objects, is magic where they understand the premise in general of what you're doing. Like I think coin from behind the ear, if a magician can do that in a way that's ultra clean, it would be an incredible effect on the audience because they know that they know what it's supposed to look like and how it's supposed to work. So you can use that against them. Things like um, playing the, the rock, paper, scissors game or, or object in the hands. It's a schoolyard game, everyone knows it. So if you're gonna add, add magic into those things, it becomes very relevant and powerful to the audience. And the same for this. Everyone knows this bar bet. Everyone's conditioned to see. If, 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 if you were speaking to an alien, they wouldn't know what the hell this is about, right? They would just be like, this is odd. But because this is something which is global, everyone does it all around the world. People are conditioned to this, and because people are conditioned, you can take full advantage of what they're expecting to see. And I think magic, the best sometimes magic, can lay in the moments where conditioning helps you take advantage of your spectators and their brain. So I really, really love this. It's super exciting, and I can't wait to see all the amazing things that you guys come up with uh, in, in, in your videos. So if you do film a video of you doing something like this, please tag me in it upload it, share it, and uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff you can do. I haven't even put half the ideas in this video because we just don't have the time, but use your imagination. Any small object, any small object, switching, vanishing, you could even use it for appearances. If you're feeling cheeky enough to just stick something to your neck, you could actually do an invisible routine where you say, we're gonna do, it. maybe you do it once or twice, say this, I'm gonna do it with an invisible coin, look, this is the invisible coin, this is the invisible coin, boom, and catch it out of, out of midair. You could just do, anything with this. So take it, work with it, play with it, have fun, and tag me in any videos that you upload. And if you're feeling super generous, guys, because I am excited by this video, then please share it around your friends. Feel free to take this video and share it on Facebook or any, any social media platforms that you can, because I think this is a fun thing that we could all be using and getting a lot of mileage out of for the real world. I mean, we're not really gonna catch magicians with this, but I think uh, we, I would love to see a lot of magicians out there actually performing this. So thank you all so much. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. If you're feeling super generous, leave me a like. But until next time, folks, I will see you in the very next video.